Hello everyone, my name is Victoria Firsanova and I'm going to present you my project about the classification of drug addicts messages in social networks with neural network. One day I met Barbara Pati, a professor of the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and I shared with her the idea that modern natural language processing systems perhaps need a more fundamental linguistic base. Such systems are based on algorithms that have not much in common in with actual language theories, and I found this strange, even unpleasant. Then Barbara told me a joke about Frederick Jelinek, who claimed that firing a linguist could contribute to better results in solving natural language processing tasks. From this moment, I began to familiarize myself with this amazing work on natural language processing and neural networks in particular. This study presents my pilot AI research. During the research, I have built a neural network model that, re that recognizes text published in virtual communities of drug addicted people. The final program analyzes any given text and assigns one of two categories. If an argument of the maxima of a neural network prediction is zero, then a given text will be defined as a publication from a non addicts online community. In this, if, if this argument is equal to one, then the program will assign a class of publications posted on edX's public pages. The study continues research conducted in 2019 that highlighted the problems of function of drug edX jargon in social networks. The results of this work became a short dictionary of drug edX algorithms widely used in virtual communities. I found all the lexical entities in the social network contacted, and I have also created a list of contacted public pages, which content is related to the topics of drug addiction. Later, I have used the list to collect a data set for the supervised learning text classification model. This study, I focus on training two neural network models classification in Python. The goal of the final program is to automatically classify online publications according to their lexical features into one of two defined categories. Texts published in drug addicts online communities or texts published in non-drug addicts online communities. Using contact API, I have collected a training data set for a supervised learning text classification model. Train two neural network models, bag of words and word embeddings, with a convolutional neural network using two different types of word vector representations, one hot encoding and word frequency indexing. During the experiments in Google Collaboratory, I have uh, implemented the parameter optimization, then compared results of two models and defined the most effective modification for this classification. The final program defines automatically if a given text was published in a drug addicts online community or not with 96% accuracy. The model recognizes text published in drug addicts communities with an accuracy of about 92% and text published in non addicts communities with about 90 I have analyzed the quality of recognition of different types of publications, for example, descriptions of mental or psychological conditions, advice or help requests, life stories. It was important to identify whether the program would be able to distinguish those messages that do not contain the most explicit characteristics of edict speech, slang and obscene language. After a series of tests, I have found that the program could implement the analysis of much deeper lexical features. For example, it classifies well those messages by addicts in which people complain about their psychological and physical condition. The professional significance of the study is that it presents a pilot AI research in the field of psycholinguistics of altered states of consciousness. The results of the study can be implemented in the field of psychology. I plan to use this AI program as a basis for my future projects. This project highlights the acute social issue. However, its result cannot be used as a diagnostic tool and its further practical implementation should be firstly discussed with experts. I have already mentioned the term, linguistics of altered states of consciousness. This term was introduced in 1983 by Dmitry Spivak. The term refers to a field of study that combines psycholinguistics and neuroscience. The purpose of this subfield is to reveal and analyze changes in the speech that take place during the alteration of consciousness. Spivak called an altered not only mental state produced by a psychoactive substance, but also a state of a human living or working in adverse conditions, for example, in the highlands, and any particular extreme emotional state, for example, anxiety. Spivak wrote about the connection between linguistics and psychology. He wrote that the effectiveness of psychotherapy depends on how deep can a therapist influence patients' layers of consciousness, and the word is the only instrument for that.
the analysis of a personal patient's language is a key to his or her consciousness. Stivak described changes in the speech that take place during the dissolution of consciousness into deeper layers. This process goes with the alteration of mental state, including the one occurring during the consummation of psychoactive substances. My project is related to the field of linguistics of altered states of consciousness as well. According to the topic of our data and the contents of messages from our collection, most of the authors of the publications could consume drugs systematically, regularly. This means that some messages from our data could be created by people with a dissoluted consciousness. All the data from our research is anonymous, so we can't present any statistical evidence. However, we can give some examples from our database. The examples on the slide present original punctuation and orthography in Russian language. Moreover, psychoactive substances, including alcohol, endure injure certain areas of the brain. This applies also to centers responsible for speech. According to Lure and Jacobson, in some cases, natural resources of the brain are not sufficient to compensate for the work of these damaged centers. This fact partly explains widespread speech defects among addicted people. We suggest that a speaker's speech production problems might be reflected in his or her internet discourse as relatively new online communication has a lot in common with live interaction. In general, the results of studies in the field of linguistics of altered states of consciousness can be used in psychotherapy. For example, the analysis of speech and text produced by addicts or people affected by psychoactive substances may shed light on patients' perception of the world. This might further help to identify sources of their problems during the therapy. Consider the following example. Stigmatization manifestations in the form of formulas like there are no former drug addicts are especially popular among addicts. During psychotherapy, it is important to analyze the patient's speech semantics to make it possible to implement the destigmatization to debunk widespread myths about the addiction. This procedure is an important step which allows establishing a trust and relationship with a therapist. Donald Spence describes a similar idea comparing psychotherapy with linguistic research. To find out as many details about a patient as possible, a good specialist should become an expert on personal patient's language. The decryption of each patient's statements help, ha, statement helps to get all its possible meanings. For example, in a sentence, I am scared to death, a specialist should first of all pay attention to the word death. This word is like a key to patient's attitude towards an issue. I have already mentioned that this research continues a work described in my paper related to the problem of the functioning of drug addict slang in social networks. As a part of the work, I have compiled a list of contacted public pages which subscribers tend to discuss their drug experience, ask for advice or help to deal with problems caused by drug consumption, and so on. According to the contents of publications posted on such pages, I can assume that most of them could be created by drug addicts. I have used the list with the web addresses of these pages to collect a data set for the neural classification. The list contains addresses of 31 public pages. All of the communities mentioned in the list can be divided into three groups according to their content. The first one includes 11 pages of so-called trip reports libraries. A publication that describes one's drug experience is called a trip report. Such texts are usually relatively large, about 500 words. The second group includes 14 thematic communities in which subscribers can share the information and ask for advice or help. The last group includes six pages of entertaining content related to the peculiarities of addict's life. Subscribers can leave in such communities short textual commentaries up to 10 words on images or videos. I have also collected some data from 53 pages which are not related to the addiction issues, but where people use vernacular and obscene language as much as addicts. This language feature is rather important, as the training data should be more or less uniform. Otherwise, the neural network model will assign all the publications which contain slang or vernaculars to class 1. Among such pages, 23 present online communities of residential areas and 20s, 20 are used to discuss the problems of private life. With the help of the official contacted application programming interface, or API, I have built a bot in Python to download all the available publications from the groups and get a full data set. API is a tool that makes it possible to implement computational interaction between two systems. 
I have collected more than 23,000 publications from the pages of both classes. The data set contains more than one and a half mi million words. The collection of text found of non edX communities contains more than 800,000 words. This is 52% uh, of the data. And the collection of text found in edX group contains oh, uh, oh, more than 700,000 words. Uh, that is 80%, 80, 48% of the data. One of the problems of natural language processing is that a neural network cannot analyze raw letters. One of the solutions is to turn a word or symbol into a digital vector. I have defined a function which transforms text data into a digital matrix. To implement this, I have created a frequency dictionary of the training data and then tokenized all the words from the array into frequency vectors. First of all, I have used a module from the Keras library for the word tokenization. I filtered the symbols, the program analyzed only Cyrillic and Latin letters, and converted all the words to the lower case. The data became uniform. Then, I have created a frequency dictionary of the training data and defined a frequency index to each token in the, vocab in the dictionary according to its sequence number. Then, I have transformed each index into one hot vector and got a matrix. To avoid the analysis of frequent words and typos, I have defined a maximum amount of words from the frequency dictionary, which the neural network would analyze, analyze during the training. The parameter was uh, equal to 20,000 uh, 20, words at first and to 20,500 after the parameter optimization. The frequency dictionary contains uh, more than 137,000 word forms. However, if a given word form from the input data is not recorded in the dictionary or its frequency index, its sequence number in the vocabulary is greater than this MWC value, that is 20,500, uh, uh, then it will be ignored by the program. I split the data into two samples, a training set, 80% uh, of the data, and a validation set, 20% of the data and collected some new publications for the test set to evaluate models. I split all the data in the training and validation sets into passages of equal length, so that the neural network could analyze short pieces of the text and not the whole array. During the tokenization, I gave a frequency index to each word in a sample. Each passage was transformed into a frequency index sequence. I transformed all the sequences into one hot encoding matrix, in which one vector represents one index. That was important to implement the training of the bag of words model. The volume of the training set is almost 9 million symbols and more than 1 million words. I have trained two classification models based on a convolutional neural network with a sequential layer. I have used the Keras library. According to some research, this neural network is quite efficient in text classification. The first model, bag of words, here B model, Compute words usage frequency, but do not take into account sentence structure or word order. However, I assume that this model might analyze balances feeling, as I didn't do the dramatization. The second one, word embeddance, E model, measures word vectors so that I can implement deeper lexical, uh, so that it can implement deeper lexical uh, analysis and uh, define semantic clusters. This model, considered to be a more effective tool for natural language processing, that is why I have made a hypothesis that E model will classify text with higher accuracy than B model. For both models, I have used Adam optimization algorithm from the Keras library, categorical cross entropy loss function, and accuracy matrix for the model evaluation. I have calculated the accuracy matrix as the percentage of correct answers to the number of the total passages. I have trained both models for 20 epochs with a batch size equal to 200. I have conducted a series of experiments with optimization of the following model parameters. The length of an analyzed passage in the sample, the offset uh, or step in sample forming, and the number of words from the frequency dictionary which our neural network has analyzed during the training, or MWC. According to the accuracy metrics, the bag of words model showed better results. This means that our hypothesis did not confirm. In the most efficient modification of this model, the value of length is 50, the step is 50, and the value of MWC is 20,500, which is greater than the initial one, 20,000. 
So I call this modification bag of words 50x50 plus MWC. During the training, the goal of the neural network was to compute weights. The weights are the values of the connection strength between text characteristics and given classes. I have set the data, this data and the model of parameters. This step was necessary for the reuse and further testing of the program. I have analyzed some publications from the public pages, which I have used earlier to collect the training data. This text did not appear in the training set. This test helped me to find out strengths and weaknesses of the program. The AI model recognizes drug ethics publications with high accuracy, 96%. Notwithstanding the presence or not of such explicit features as specific slang or vernacular language, the program classifies mostly correctly. This example contains 84 words. Uh, yeah. However, the program did not analyze 5 because of MWC parameter. This loss did not influence the result. The program gave the right answer, even though the author of this publication did not use special slang. I have found that most of the publications from ethics online communities contain help requests or complaints about psychological or physiological problems. I have tested the programs on texts published in non ethics communities made by people struggling from depressions. I have found that in some cases such examples might get class one. Perhaps the training and the validation set need more publications from groups of different types in which people describe their mental and physical conditions. I believe that the program can become a tool for automatic detection of addicts communities. For example, this might help experts to contact with addicts and offer them psychological consultation. This is an unusual example of a trip report. Such texts usually have a similar structure, however, a reader can guess that this text was published in a drug addicts online community only after a short context analysis. The neural network did not recognize a sense of this message. However, this example is exceptional. After training a neural network on a large amount of text data and experimental with model parameters, I have created an efficient classification tool, which can filter the information from social networks. This result opens up several future directions. For example, I can design a program that will classify pages in social networks and define automatically whether a given public page presents a drug commu addicts community or not. Overall, I can assume that artificial intelligence can deal with the recognition of language characteristics of a social category. I also believe that this program will become a starting point for my further experiments with AI. Drug addicts need to share their experiences. They also regret their past. Instead of consulting with medical experts and psychologists, they leave messages for unknown people online. This AI classification model allows finding such people and such communities automatically, so I plan to continue my research in the field of linguistics of altered states of, states of consciousness. <laughs>